नमस्कार श्री सुधाकर शेट्टी जी प्रेसिडेंट एफ के सी सी आई ऑल दी ऑफिस पेरल्स ऑफ एफ के सी सी आई लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन एंड पर्टिकुलरली माई सिस्टर इट्स अ ग्रेट प्रिवलेज टू बी हियर इन फैक्ट ऑन इंटरनेशनल वुमेन डे I wanted to be so much a part of a week program also, but somehow we had a delegation coming in uh, from the National Defence College. I could not make a uh, make it to their program, so I made sure that I come to this program. Um, the idea behind holding the international why do we celebrate International Women's Day? It's basically to celebrate and commemorate the. the effort that had taken for women to reach at this point of time the socio economic political um, strengths that we have gained in the past century and also to reaffirm that we have to take it forward see what has been done has been done by our uh, past generations our mothers our grandmothers but we have to build on it and take it forward so the idea is to reaffirm take an oath that what we have to do for our future generation is something that we have to do now also we must understand you know most of the time when we talk about history we talk about history so our history is not just the story of men but it's also her story and we should always remember that <laughs> many women of high intellect spiritual prowess and courage have shaped the you know our destiny of our nation from sita draupadi maitre akka mahadevi to rani jhansi ahilya bai razia sultan to subha lakshmi and kalpana chawla india has produced many eclectic women of substance not just the women in public life mostly what we do is we fate people you know if i'm in the public life or somebody in the public life but there are so many women who are working at their home who are working in factories who are entrepreneurs who are in offices working 9 to 5 all of them have contributed in making india the fourth largest economy in the world and we should never forget that. see women who are working at home is not counted in our gdp but that doesn't mean that women at home do not contribute in fact their contribution is much more because they say behind every man there is a woman definitely there is a woman working at home that allows the man to work so freely outside in my case i do have a man who works at home and in office also to ensure that i work freely uh, since the gathering is predominantly of women entrepreneurs so i would try to address the issues which are faced by the women entrepreneurs uh, i can take up the other issues because my party thinks is one of the issue which is very close to my eyes our heart is health related to health but that i'll take it up later uh see i find entrepreneurship as a very difficult work game in fact it is much more difficult than what i do as an is officer the imponderables are so many the risks associated are so many that it's very difficult which is why out of hundreds of new enterprises that start the startups that start businesses that you know begin we have very few the success rate is very low so since uh, the risks are at every step of the way be it the first will be recognizing the right opportunity now as women sometimes we find it very difficult to you know to get access to the right market studies and you want to start something then you should start something which has a market either the product or your service somebody is looking for those services or somebody is looking for the products for that you need to have access to research market studies you should be able to get that so that's a risk involved i'm talking in terms of you know con uh, constructing institutionalizing these uh, second is basically preparing a business plan because for you for anybody to succeed a business to succeed you should have a very cohesive business plan in place and that is something which is which is not something so esoteric which is not something so difficult it's basically a skill set that can be given uh the third related to the risk is you know how to get the funding how to get the resources because most of us are aware of you know banks financial institutions 
all are some, you know, we, we borrow for our relatives, we borrow from our family. But at the same time, there are lots of angel investors, there are lots of venture capitalists. But we need to create a platform where we can access them, even for a smaller enterprises. Fourth, related to is developing the right product, which I talked about it. When you're making a business plan, it's very, very important that our women should be empowered, that we, when we are looking at it, our products which we design should be such that the market is ready to take them. Now, just when I was coming in, they were, you know, very interesting products and that have markets. I just, you know, got this and such a beautiful piece, you know. These are the products which, you know, market is ready to take. So one of the most important thing is that having the right market fit. Other is, you know, to understand when to scale. Many of the enterprises which I've seen in the women in particular, within uh, women entrepreneurs, they start, they do well, and then they get satisfied in that. They don't scale up that much, right? So when to scale, when to take your business to the next level is very, very important. And also to understand that this is not the time to scale. So you have seen many startups. Sometimes what happens is, if there is a study that has been done, 80% of the startups fail because they scale too early. Because the private equity people or the venture capital fund put in their money and then there is a pressure to scale up. So they are not bothered about their you know, margins, they are not bothered about the profits, but they are scaling up. But in our women case, many of the cases it's the opposite story. That we are not scaling up. See, ultimately, if your products are doing well and you are thinking that you are getting the market, then we all need to work together that how to scale up to take it to the next level, from Bangalore to Karnataka level, from Karnataka to India level. And the other very important risk or very big risk is managing the workforce. Now, workforce is in today's time of high attrition rate. It is not easy to hold on to the people that you are working. So all of these problems and the risk associated with entrepreneurship requires a very constructive solution that we need to look at. Now, uh, what can be done? Through government, we try to do something. We try to create mechanism of giving you soft seed capital. We try to give you interest subvention. There are skill development program of the government. I won't go into the details because of the code of conduct. Uh, so there are many of the schemes which are there, which are helping women and which, but what I feel is entrepreneurship though is a, or business though is an art. If you look at doctors, everybody would have started from say Ames, but why one doctor is better than the other doctor? Though there is a science involved, but there is a bit of art form also involved that requires intuition. But having said that, there is so much of, there are skills. There are certain things which can be given, skills that can be provided to the women to make them better entrepreneurs, better business women, and that is what the government is looking at providing. I was in our previous avatar, uh, before I became Commissioner uh, Industries, I was Commissioner MSME. And in fact, I would tell you that I really loved my job as Commissioner MSME because there's so much that you could do for the micro, small, medium enterprises. In fact, we were working at creating this entire ecosystem which I talked about. Uh, how we can provide the raw material to the women entrepreneurs or to the male entrepreneurs as a whole at a very low cost, at a good cost, but quality. We can provide the warehousing, the transportation facilities, how we can brand. So I saw if this product, which I'm wearing, it's a beautiful product, but if it is branded and a top of a brand comes in, it will sell at twice that price that we are selling. So the branding becomes very important. We were thinking of creating a statewide brand where the, all the <coughs> small entrepreneurs can just you know log on to that system and enjoy the uh, common advertising, common branding, if we can work it. Even organizations like FKCCI can work on it. Again, we were looking at it, that how technology is very, very important. If you have the right technology, technology of production, add technology in your own. Say, for example, you can produce more efficiently if you have technology, CRM technology, HR technology. But these technology become very costly for a 
micro or a small enterprise to get. So we also wanted to create a mechanism where, where a platform where all these vendors can come and offer their at the right prices. And you know, um, and also create access to the market. So online and offline. All the Amazons of the world, Flipkarts of the world, plus the brick and mortar worlds, we can create a way where it's easier for you to put your products there. Because many of the women uh, entrepreneurs, the small ones, are dependent on fairs. When the big exhibitions happen, that's the time when they do it. And later on, they are just, you know, it's the orders come, that happens, but otherwise it's not happening. So this is what government, as government we can do. But as women entrepreneurs, you need to unite and support each other. See, government can do as much, but organizations like FKCCI and the women as a whole, the sorority of the group, can come together to help each other. You know, at home, we require our mothers and mother-in-laws, our sisters and sister-in-laws to support us. Support us in dreaming big. See, I am a result of my mother's dream. So if my mother and mother-in-law would not have supported, I could not be, I would not have been standing before you. I remember when I was going, I come from a very small town called Meerut. I'm sure it's some, most of, of you have heard of Meerut. And I did my 12th there. After 12th, see what determines, you know, it determines your exposure. I didn't want to do my graduation in Meerut itself. I wanted to go out and dream and do something bigger. And that is how I moved to Delhi. And that's the time my mother said, if you have to go to Delhi, you have to go to best college, otherwise don't go. And that's when I realized that I was getting admission in another college also, IP college. But there I was getting hostel and everything. And I was getting admission in Lady Sri Ram College, but I was not getting hostel immediately. Heeding to my mother's advice, I decided to, you know, commute from Delhi for a few months till the time I got my hostel and take, took admis, admission in LSR. So that, you know, paved the way for my thinking because the kind of exposure that you get is much of a totally different level. Uh, similarly, you uh, at homes for your daughters, you have to ensure that there is no differentiation between a male child and a female child. As children, I have a male and a female child. They are twins. And I don't see any difference between the two of them. Their needs are very similar. There is no difference. Difference only comes much later. And that is only biological difference. I think our emotions are all similar. So we should not differentiate between boy and a girl at the family. And that's a big step that we can take. At work, what we, as women, what we need to do is like our policies, like if I'm in the government, I have to create an enabling environment for women entrepreneurs or women in general. You are at your offices, look at it, that how there is a crash, because that's the big support that we can provide to the women. Or to ensure that there, if there are women entrepreneurs who have been successful, they can create a mentorship for the others. They can open the doors, because it's basically who knows in the business world, you can get the doors open, so we can work on that. So much can be achieved if women come together. Uh, till a century ago, if we look at it, Women in most countries could not even vote. They hardly any had any voice in public discourse. We have definitely come a very long way from that time. We stand on the work done, as I told you before, on our mothers, of mothers and grandmothers. We have to take it forward to ensure that there is at least 50% participation of women in every walk of life. Um, my parting thought, which I always, you know, is that being women, we generally, you know, get totally bogged down or totally consumed about taking care of our family, our work, and we neglect our health. So my parting thought would be that at home, please don't neglect your health. If you're physically fit, mentally alert, spiritually agile, only then can you give in your 100% to whatever you're doing. See, we expect nowadays women, the pressure on women is much more than it was before. Earlier they were working at home. Now you have to work at home and manage. You have to work out and you have to manage home as well. That requires much more fitness than before. But compared to our grandmothers, I think we are less fit. So we need to work. See, if today's age, if you look at it, younger girls are having polycystic ovary syndrome. 
you having fibroids, earlier menopause is happening. There's so many thyroid problems. Every third, fourth people would be having TSH. Now, why is it happening? We need to understand our bodies. We need to work on it. That is a thing through food. There are certain things that we can control. And when a woman does it, not only she does it for herself, she does it for the entire family. And that's how we have healthier nation and healthier people. So with this, uh, what I would say, the hand, there is a saying, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. I think the time for the woman has come and the time for women to move.